So uh, this is the outline of the talk and I'll keep expanding as I go. So first thing is PKMS. How many of you have heard uh, this acronym before? Anybody would want to expand on what it is or have you used any tool which uh, helps you manage, uh, hel helps you do PKM? Okay, uh, uh -huh. so that's fine. So uh, PKMS stands for Personal Knowledge Management System, and it's basically a system that allows you to brain dump. Could be thoughts, could be some tasks, it could be thoughts about a task, could be places you want to go, books you want to read, uh, movies you want to watch, anything that uh, uh, goes through your brain. You, uh, that's what PKMS is. So, um, what uh, what tools do you use uh, when it comes to these these kinds of things? Like you, tasks is very common. Uh, thoughts it's there, but uh, not a lot of people use tools to manage their thoughts. But uh, I would like to hear from you guys. Like, what tools do you use to manage these kinds of things? You can go uh, one by one and share your uh, workflow. Yeah, I'll uh, go first, Arvind here. Yeah. See, I uh, my go-to editor is VS Code. So in VS Code, I just have a todo.txt file. Okay. And there I keep track as bullet points, all the to-do things, uh, you know. So it's not what you would call a PKMS. It's a very primitive tool, mm -hmm. but it kind of works for me. But the thing is, I have to like interact. Uh, I have to proactively go and check what is my to-do list and uh, what is the upcoming events that I need mm -hmm. to attend. Mm -hmm. For knowledge management, I guess, uh, yeah, it's a good uh, thing to do. I have not actively managed my knowledge. I, I would okay. put it that way, yeah. But what I do is when I read things, I try to make a mind map of things. Okay, okay. Right. Previously, I used to do it on pen and paper. I still do it. Sometimes I do it uh, online uh, using any kind of vector graphics tool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mind map, I find it very effect effective because you can kind of associate one idea to another and connect them with lines and you know, add some annotations along the lines. So that is yeah. what I use, but you know, yeah, it's not the best tool, I guess, for knowledge management per se. Okay, okay. Sure, sure. I'm Ashok. I've been into this industry for two decades. Uh, from, this, uh, from the beginning of my career until date, I have been maintaining on the Excel sheet. So to okay. record all my learnings as well as uh, the so and so URLs and so and so details uh, the kind of uh, exposure we get. Either I do go for an outside or I go for a, a, my marketing trip or a promotion. I take the readings and email and I'll put it into the Excel sheet. In the meantime, I also tried with a, a Microsoft Note, but that, that did not work out. So for that reason, mm. I started with the Excel sheet. And I still continue. But what happens when I've been in the mobile? I take a note in the mobile, but again I'll, I'll copy this note it again with the Excel sheet. Okay. Yeah, please let me know if there are any better tools like this. Sometimes I, yeah. I also do a picture and I create an album inside my, my photo gallery and I'll push mm -hmm. I keep pushing those pictures into the the learning folder into my, okay. my uh okay. photo albums. Okay, that do you link those? No. Sorry, do you link those pictures from the Excel sheet? Yes, absolutely. I link it up. Okay. Actually, what you said uh, you you have been doing this from start of your career. So, yes. like, how big, how long has been the career? How big is your <laughs> Excel sheet? Yes, it is just two decades, and uh, and the Excel sheet has grown to say just twenty four sheets. And uh, wow. I, I mean, I mean it in this way: every one year is one sheet. And you know, actually, you know, at the, at the beginning, we are the people, we are coming to an organization. And also, when the change hits us, we are also the people, we come out of it. 
what happens no i keep a glue between the my ex colleagues even after 20 years or 18 years i ping them telling that no we had attended a meeting on so and so date they they puzzle at me and i show uh, i feel so unique okay okay <laughs> my, that's my very interesting even, i my wife i, I heard uh, yes because no i i have learned from so many of the uh, my my senior mentors who have been telling that actually you no know, we only have a two two or three members as a siblings but we have many and many people across the globe who are all working for one goal or one vision we get interacted with from time over the time and we get separated you know what is the reason yeah. for you to come back and talk to them telling that yes we did this sometime back that will kind of yeah so sure. that that's a uh, that's a really interesting uh, way to manage the manage the manage that information i had, i'm probably hearing it for the first time that someone has that has had that discipline to maintain all of this in an excel sheet i have not yeah. been a big spreadsheet user but uh, that's very interesting but i think this is the, the, the this tool logseek is a uh, uh, way to go forward it's much more efficient you don't have to do manual work uh, but yeah uh, I, I hope you will have some big takeaways from this talk. Yes, anyone else wants to go? Just names of the tools they use to, you know, you manage tasks. I mean, uh, I assume a majority of the people here have worked in software industry. You would have some sort of a personally maintained system where you uh, jot down that this is the stuff you did for this specific bug, is for this feature. So. Anybody has any other tool in uh, tool they use that they want to share? Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, yeah. So uh, here, I'll just uh, take a note saying that Ashok uses Excel. Right now, uh, what is Logseek. How many of you have heard of Logseek? I can hear a show of hands. Okay. Sorry, it's we cool. didn't get opportunity. We missed that. Sorry. Sorry, we did not get the opportunity to look at the Logseek. No, I mean, have you heard of this Logseek tool before? No, That's yet. what I asked. Okay, yeah. So let me go to this site, uh, demo.logseek.com. So this is the uh, entry. Uh, this is what you get greeted with, which is basically uh, a journal. So it it has it it has a page titled today's date, and then you start with a bullet point. And uh, uh, so I never had the habit of journaling, but after using this tool, it became second nature to me. Now I pretty much uh, log every important thing that I do at the job or some thought I had in the middle of the night, I open Logseek and then put it down here. And then uh, what I get from it is uh, uh, like Ashok shared uh, some minutes ago that, oh, I had this thought on this day. Then we'll look into how it's actually uh, retrievable efficiently through this software. Like dumping is one thing. And the other thing is how do you actually get it back? Uh, you had some thought, you have some very uh, blurry memory of that thought and you want to get it back. How do you do it efficiently using Logseek? We'll, uh, we'll see as we go on. Okay. Logseek is an outliner, meaning that everything is just a bullet point. You can't write paragraph uh, like you do in Word or any other uh, note taking software generally. You, you There you would have the idea of paragraphs. You would just write like English prose. But uh, an outliner is different in that sense. Not like you can't do it. Uh, it it's just that that's the default behavior of Logseek where you start. This is. Uh, this is one, and then you hit enter. 
people that is acting weird. But that's weird. Sorry about that. Yeah, so you see, like, this is one, this is two. This is an outliner, basically, where everything is a, it becomes a bullet point. Some people might find it weird. Oh, I, not everything is a bullet, but uh, I have grown to actually appreciate this, um, this way of jotting things down. Then you have, uh, you can nest. Uh, you can hit tab to nest things uh, to any level you want, and it's not like you have a, a, a you have some header here. Then you shift tab to go back a level. And that's basically an outliner. And then, uh, okay, as I said, like it's not like you always need to go a point. If you do a shift enter, you can still type it in the same bullet point. But generally, like you do have this behavior where you enter and then it just makes another bullet point. Now, uh, has anyone heard of org mode or Emacs? Okay. Uh, but I'm sure most of you will have heard what Markdown is. So it pretty much supports everything that Markdown has to offer. Bolds, it have formatting, I mean, of bolds, italics, code, code blocks and quotes also. Uh, so you can, again, you can nest this inside of here. There's no restriction. You can put things wherever you want uh, and you can use Markdown style editing. So you can see that I have specified here that this is the C language code, just like in the Markdown syntax and it has put it there. Let's put it inside here. Yes. Okay. How many of you are developers here? Have been a developer. Okay. I would like to uh, just ask. Uh, uh, I mean, give provide provide a provide provide a context where I face this problem on the daily. Uh, so in my case, like I would like to group issues reported by customers. So I'll have a one folder for a customer and uh, uh, one folder per customer. So I'll put every issue reported by that customer or every feature developed for that customer in one folder. And then, uh, I would also want to have it in a way where uh, I group by components. So I'm I'm uh, writing a component, a new component. Now, when some customer, so I have a folder for that component and a customer has reported an issue with that component. Now, I don't know where to put it. It always confuses me. Do I put it in the customer thing or do I put it in that component thing? It always bothers me. Have uh, have you have you ever had this kind of a scenario where you are spending way too much time in organizing stuff? Like, okay, I have written this component. I have a folder for this component. Now I got an issue. I usually put all issues related to this component in this folder, but uh, I also have another idea where I put issues. I group issues by customer. Now, how do I group this? Like, if I'm maintaining folders, that's what I mean by hierarchy. If I'm maintaining folders, then that's a uh, that's inefficient it, and it breaks at that point. But with tags, uh, I can I can go past it. And the way I do is uh, in logseq. Uh, let me show you the demo. So let's say I get I get I get an issue from a customer. Got an issue. From, uh, from customer X, uh, regarding some component, right? 
OK, for some reason this is broken. Let me let me go to the home journal here. So, OK, so I got an issue. Got an issue from OK, you can see this May 31st today's date. I am demonstrating what I would do in a certain scenario. Got an issue from trust owner one. Uh, where component X was broken. Fine. Now, what happened to the what happened to the fact that I eventually would want to organize this and I had an issue. OK, do I put it here or there? So what I did here was just note that uh, was just that I noted down what happened. That's it. So now I can take my time to organize this. So. What makes sense uh, when deriving this kind of information back? I would like to, I mean, at some point in the future, I would like to retrieve all um, component X related things. Right. And at some other point, I would like to retrieve the fact uh, I would like to retrieve uh, all work I, I had done for customer one. Now, right now, th there's no, uh, I mean, I, this is not allowing me to do that right now, but it's extremely easy. What I do is I select customer one and then I wrap it in these double square brackets. Okay. And uh, what I, wa I want component X also to be a thing that I know will exist in multiple other places. So I wrap it in that. So what it basically did is created a page for these. So if I click on this, you can see it's a page. Now here I can inside this page, I can write some data about this a customer is from whatever. Uh, and uh, if I go back to the journal pages. Component X will also become a page, right? Then. Uh, maybe I get another issue, got an issue but uh, got an issue from customer. You can see now it will suggest to me if I do double mm, square brackets, it will just give me autocomplete uh, where mm, component CY is very slow, right? Now I just intuitively made this into a page. I didn't have to do it because this is, uh, it, it grows now. When I click on this, you can see that I have two linked references. I've got customer one, uh, and this is a bi-directional linking that happens. Uh, and it's very easy to do, as you saw, it's just uh, wrapping things in double square brackets. Right, now, uh, coming back to retrieval, how do you, let's say you are somewhere here and you want to retrieve uh, everything that was related to component X. So you can press control or command K and then you can search for that. Component X, you can see the first one is pages and you've got you can create a new page, but then you not only pages are searched, it will also do a full text search in your entire system. No matter how many days it will do that and it will also give you the blocks. You can see it has matched complete a task also. But you can see it's uh, intelligently ranking uh, which one matters the most, right? So I can go here. Now you can see all that have, right now there's only one. But you can imagine over time you will get this kind of uh, contextual information that uh, uh, you know you did it on May 31st. And which customer was it? It was customer one. Then. Uh, similar to customer one, if you want to know uh, what all things you have done related to customer one, you just go here and then you check the linked references. On top of this, you can add filters. I mean, let's say you want to uh, see like what all things you have done for customer one, which is related to component X. There's a tiny filter button which you, you can click, and then here it will already give you all of these things, right? Then you can do component X. Now you get only those results, right? And you can imagine how useful it's going to be over time. 
and building it on the fly now. But uh, if you have the discipline of uh, doing this journaling and making sure that you link you link stuff, uh, it uh, the system will grow really really nice and it will be really helpful. Um, that's what I meant by uh, you know now it's talk log see that's what I meant by this part where I said frictionless organization so. Uh, I don't have to think upfront like where to put this. So I've used other tools, uh, Notion, Obsidian. Uh, I've tried a lot, lot of other options. There I would have this friction where I would have to spend a lot of time uh, on. Uh, I have to before even writing that down. I would have to figure out where to put it. So that was that was very very uh, tedious, and um, I. Do I put it in the page? Do I maintain a journal? Uh, do I put it in there, that? And now I don't need to think anything at all. What I do is whenever I get something, I just go to the home page. I know it's going to open today's journal and I just write it down in that journal. And then I, I have um, uh, no problem organizing later. So it just comes by nature. Like, okay, this is something I really want to filter on later. So I just put it in square brackets and I put it in journal. So in my case, most of the times the page itself will have very less information. The value comes from its references. I will know that this is something that uh, you know, I worked on. Uh, yeah, so linked references, you can refer it from inside another page. Uh, so component X, you can say that uh, uh, was requested, uh, was uh, designed. Uh, was designed as was designed because uh, customer one requested it. Right now, you can refer it inside another page. Now you have this information. If I go to customer one, you can see on May thirty first, it's it, like this was the this was the thing that happened. And in component X, you also have this reference. Right, and then uh, you also have unlinked references where, um, you know, if I just write customer one here, then go back to customer one, you can see like, it's not explicitly linked, but it will still have it. Even if you forget it, you can find it in unlinked reference. Right, so that was about frictionless organization. Okay, uh, task management. Task management. Yep. Let's say you want to create a task. What is that task? Task is I've uh you do a forward slash, and this brings up a lot of functions from Logseek. You can uh, most of them are self-explanatory. So do you want to create an H1, H2? Just like that, you have task related things. So now we are used to doing to do and doing, so you can do to do and then explain task management in Logsy. Right. Now, this has become a task just by uh, you know doing that forward slash and to do and autocomplete. It has become a task. Now, uh, when I press on this one, it changes the state to doing. Now, when it's in doing state, it will keep calculating the amount of time it's in the doing state. If I toggle it back, it will say 11 seconds. But then if I toggle to doing again, because I'm still explaining task management to you, it will uh, accumulate the time again. Now, there is a page for all of this. Like, to do is just another page. Everything is a page in this one. So you can go to to do and you can see how many things are in the to do state. You can see there's only one explain more feature of features of Logsy that was logged on April 28. And uh, just one more thing I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, context, so customer one said that something was wrong. And uh, inside this one, I have a, a to do. And I'll say uh, check 
the check if cy is working something like this right now i can go back to to do and you can see that it's not just the block you can see that upper context is also preserved you can see it's the to do but what is behind this you can imagine any number of levels up there it can, it will preserve all of it the parent child relationship and if the child is a block you are trying to reference it will have all of the context behind now you can see what all tasks you want and uh, yeah that's how easy task management is in this one now when i say when i uh, have uh, when i click this one it will do and you can see that i've spent one minute and if you hover over this you will have actual timestamps then uh, you have a bunch of shortcuts you can do control or command enter to toggle between the states and uh, yeah that's about task management let me go back to the presentation right queries now this uh, this there are some uh, yeah before we get before we go to queries uh, let's look at some data I already have. If I go to, so I I had uh, I had a trial session before uh, with Arvind. So now I, I in this in this uh, system I would want to search what all uh, discussions have happened between uh, Arvind and I, right? So I can do I can go and do a command K and then Arvind. You can see that there's only one linked reference right now. So you said reached out for a talk. And uh, now if I go to the talk, then I have uh, then I have all of the talks uh, listed down. You can see uh, as Arvind uh, you know, said in the introduction, gave a talk on Vim. Now I can see that that is also linked. Like on October 14th, I gave the talk. And uh, yeah, here, if I wanted to, as I showed earlier, I can filter talk related to BIM can do, then it will filter based on that. Then, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, Okay, let me go back to the presentation. Yes, now uh, there was a feature I was missing on in LogSeq uh, where I could generate tables and I could have uh, like it's more of a structured database that I was missing on this one, but that's not that's not really. Um, but I but it was just that uh, I did not know of this feature. So basically, there's a query feature in in um, in logseq where you do forward slash again to you know get all of the possible things you have uh, uh, all of the functions you have and then you can search for query and here you get this here i can say uh, page oh, sorry uh, page reference and if i want to list down all the talks you can see it's a live query, meaning if I create another talk, talk example, you can see that it updates. See this? And then you can toggle between the states. Here you have, um, you know, this is the block view, this is the table view. Table views are nice. Uh, here you get the page, then I mean, if there are tasks, you can have that. Then there's something interesting. So uh, you can have uh, properties. So in references, here I have a reference of talk. So I can press shift enter. I can add a property. So I know there's presenter property. So I can have this as Arvin. 
Now here you see that it's ubiquitous in the sense you can use the feature anywhere. Yeah, here I've linked that. Arvind is the presenter of this example talk. Now if I go to that live query, you can see that presenter Arvind. Now I can sort based on this presenter. I can sort based on the page. You know, all sorts of stuff. Then I can again uh, go back to, you know, if I want to uh, get all talks done by Arvind, I'll go here and then I'll filter talk. You can see there are two references. Not done by Arvind, but if, if I actually want done by Arvind, then I would filter on this property. So uh, is the presenter. Then I get this one. Um, yeah, uh, and there's also one other feature, which is the graph view. Here, uh, earlier, like at the start of the talk, we had Ashok explaining. No, oh, I, I think it was Arvind explaining. So it's like the brain associates things together. So you can see that if I go to just do this. You can see how it links together. Now you can see that customer one is linked to component X, but component X might be uh, related to something else. You you can uh, component X is the part of a bigger system. So you can imagine this graph growing. Uh, just like uh, just like your brain accumulates more and more knowledge. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, that's all I have for this presentation. Like, OK, so there are quite a few rough edges with the application. It's still in the beta. I mean, sync is implemented, but it's behind a paywall. And that is also a little rough in the you can't expect like a production level uh, implementation of uh, some of the things. And I guess you you did see some rough edges like when I started to present here. It is causing some issues. So, but um, to you know, tell you more about Logseek is it's uh, open source. It's local first, meaning you it's an opt-in to use their cloud, uh, but you would have to pay for it. But uh, all of the files are in the local file system, so you can access them pretty easily. So there was a I would like to share one uh, share it out. So. Now I have to look for the tasks I have done already. So yeah, so this one and like on April 28th, I had a task where I had to add an old page mentioning the talk on Vim. So this is what I had to do. Um, I have to manually add a markdown file. So if you see here, May 31st, and all it takes to add a new journal for me is go to documents, Webopedia. This is this is the uh, format. So here you have journals, right? Uh, somehow you missed Loxy. You missed to enter something on a previous day. Uh, what you do is uh, right now is 2024. 20, which day is missing? 29th and 30th, right? So I can just do touch 2024 20, 04 I'm just making sure that we don't have anything on 30, right? We don't have it. If I do it, uh, maybe I should have to write something into it. Uh, you have done 04 and, April. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so it's uh, five. Oh, then we could see at the bottom, I guess. Maybe refresh. I guess April yeah, 30th already so, yeah, there was an entry. Hello. No, 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 no. The, this I, I did it just now. Here. Yeah, this one. Um, but yeah, I can do this. Uh, I can copy this to 2024 05 30. Then you can see it. There. Yeah, there you go. Like, uh, my point of focus was that these are all 
text files which you can go back and use your editor to write things down if you look at, if you open that one up right just be like this so um yeah i mean backing this up uh, it's not it's very trivial you can use some cron job to back it up to some google drive and uh, you know get the work done. You don't have to rely on some cloud service, and especially when you are uh, in in a in an enterprise setting, usually they would not allow you to use a third party cloud uh, to store company related stuff. So this is a very nice fit. And uh, to talk a little bit more about my daily usage of this, so uh, I just jot everything down. Uh, I will have some agenda for the day. So there's some other feature like let's say you want to add a date. Uh, you can pick a date. Today is May 31. So let's say I want to pick May 8. I want to do a task on this day. So I do to do and then I do X. If I do this right when it's June 8th journal, I will get this task. It's like a it's like a primitive reminder that I get. So where did it go? Where did it go? Yes, here. So this one, this task, I, I can still achieve, uh, still look at it. It will still be there. But uh, the way I did it there was, um, you know, it will allow me to say that, oh, okay, so this is important. You have to do it today or something like that. So I uh, pretty much have most of the bullet points for me uh, in the enterprise, uh, in the enterprise knowledge management system is going to be a to do. And I'll have an agenda for the day and I keep, uh, you know, toggling this to do and I'll also get a nice metric. Oh, I uh, spent this much time. And if you go back, uh, if you just recollect that query feature, it will show the clock time. And if uh, I think if I do a live query. Uh, query. Here. Uh, find. Data. Page. Data. Uh, I go to do. I don't know. I'm I am a little dusty about this now. <clears throat> Ready? Sorry. So properties yeah i mean this this part i'm not quite sure but uh yeah i mean i used to have um, uh issues reporting like what all stuff i worked on on a specific week now it just uh, if i spend some more time on this one i can pretty much write a, a table like this live query which will give me uh, all the tasks that i completed it in the last week and then that's that can just be automated even further to maybe send an email or whatnot. So, yeah, and then I also have uh, you know pages for every teammate. Then uh, like I have, uh, I mean, I, I have a pretty nice time recollecting, not from my mind but from my second brain, which is Logseek. Oh, uh, what did I discuss uh, about this specific thing with this colleague? Uh, and then with the properties, right? I have a, I have some some page called a meet, and uh, this has a topic, and this has a property where I'd say just attendees, attendees, and here I, as I said, I'll have a page. So creating a page is just uh, very easy. So attendees maybe are in, and then uh, a show. You know, just and then if I go, if I want to retrieve like all the meetings I had with Ashok, I can just go to this page here and then. Uh, yeah, click this one. There you go. Like I had all the meetings and this topic will tell me and then I also have the context of the date. Like I had a meeting on this topic on this day with these people. And then uh, if I want to add more notes on this, right, that's pretty, pretty easy where, uh, you know, I just nest. Uh, sorry. Uh, excuse me. Uh, look here. Yeah, so I put it inside here. 
this happened, this happened, this happened, and then you can nest inside here. Then I go back and try the same thing. Yeah, I have uh, all this information with, uh, I mean, at my disposal. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all. Like uh, now we are open to discuss. Anybody has any thoughts, any questions? Um, if they want to, you know, uh, uh, get their setup up and running, any questions, I'm ready to take. The other day you mentioned yeah. about priorities, right? For a task, you can oh. set three levels of priorities. Correct, 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 correct. So yeah, see, see check if X, Y is working. So this is a customer thing. So we make it uh, highly uh, important. So there are three priorities, uh, A, B, and C. Uh, I had used other tools where we could set the priorities as well, but then the, too much freedom is also painful like then i forget like i'm not i can cannot be consistent but now i've learned to be just as efficient with just the three given levels of priority so a you can see this if i press this it will automatically change the priority if i want to decrease it and then here but again the the you know the simplicity of this is that it the b is just another page <laughs> so it's like if you want to uh, see what all tasks you can have a block which says uh, B, right? It doesn't it isn't a task, but uh, it, that reference will still come here. But here, if you want to filter only the task you want to do, you can do to do. But then, if you see, uh, so again here, go back to this thing. If done, then the way I do is if I want to see all the tasks that I did, right? I can add that filter. Now I get all B tasks that are done. So that's the priority. Yeah, thanks for reminding me, Alvin. That, that was a uh, that's nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I heard a couple of other people. Yeah, I'm So, you know, what I under, understood is that every time I want to use this uh, tool, I have to open uh, the website, right? Boxing, uh, correct. Uh, that's one, but, uh, you, you, they have, uh, they have uh, an application that, uh, uh, you, uh, you can download. So this is a native application. It's electron, but it's good okay. enough. Okay. So uh, when you say application means uh, it runs on, uh, our mobile phones also. Uh, there is a mobile application, but, uh, that come, uh, that brings me back to rough edges. Like I've used it on phone and it's not nice. And again, sync is a little weird you would have to find your way of like how do you sync between your phone and uh, <coughs> phone and the system but uh, if i'm just using say for example one system uh, so yeah. uh, the, hmm. that and whatever i enter it gets stored hmm. in some cloud right uh, no no uh, on your local system even on your phone it will store it on your phone storage okay and uh, suppose I uh, okay, so that means it is linked to my whatever information is there is uh, uh, is on my. Suppose I'm using one laptop, and it is mm -hmm. there only in that machine. Suppose I go to office mm -hmm. and uh, I use mm -hmm. some other laptop, and I want to access all my uh, mm -hmm. this uh, uh, logins. So how yeah. do I get that? Yeah, so just like I showed you. So this, uh, uh, let me just show you the, um, you know. When you are when you open the application, you say this is a demo graph. Basically, a graph means a folder, so you can add a graph. Uh, so Devopedia and then select, right? It opens all the files. You can see it's the same thing I had on the system, just that it's opened in the web. So now you to coming to your question, it is just a matter of copying that folder that you opened in Logseek, which will look something like this. Devopedia, you can see this journals, Logseek, and pages. So if you copy this folder, right? If you go here and then CP Devopedia, uh, uh, if you copy this folder to your machine, then it will start to you. I mean, uh, you're good to go. Okay. So basically, uh, it's like uh, if I understood, uh, if I'm using a home laptop and mm. I do there, and mm. then um, I copy some uh, whatever that folder, 
information, yeah. all the information to yeah. say Google Drive. And then when mm-hmm. I go to the work laptop mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. in office, then I mm-hmm. uh, copy back that folder to my local uh, office laptop and then yeah. I get back everything. Yes, absolutely. The syncing part is the difficult part. As I said, it comes under the rough edges. Uh, you have a sync option, but uh, it's it's a little tricky and it's behind a paywall. But usually okay. when it comes to corporate things, right, the, as I said, for my use case, it's perfect. I, I cannot use a cloud vendor. I want the uh, files to be private and only available to me. And uh, okay. I'm not supposed to put it in any other laptop. So it's like the perfect use case. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I get it. I, I think. Uh... With that uh, thing, yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, thank you. This is this like a really cool, uh, uh, cool system of uh, knowledge management. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, so uh, hey, hey, Nikhil, I have one more question. So I, I I saw that you mentioned about Obsidian, right? So I currently use Obsidian where I sync uh, all the files between my different mm. computers and the phone as well. And mm-hmm. at least like with the rough edges, Obsidian has a better experience, I would say overall, right? Because the, the desktop app and even the mobile app are more polished over, like I did explore LogSeq, but just for a little bit. So you mentioned oh. you have used Obsidian as well, but switched back to LogSeq, right? So what are the things that you found that you could do with LogSeq, but maybe harder to do with Obsidian or not at all possible with Obsidian? Uh, I, I wouldn't say not at all. On, Obsidian. Uh-huh. Yeah, sorry. Okay. I, I wouldn't say not at all possible, but uh, I, the, I first tried Obsidian. I mean, the, it's another arc in my, uh, you know, in my journey to using LogSeq. I tried Obsidian. Then I tried some other tools. I had, I had used LogSeq. Then I used Obsidian. I liked Obsidian better because it had a Vim mode. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. then uh, uh, then I moved to something else. Then I somehow something, you know, got into my head and then I gave Logseek another try before Obsidian I tried Logseek. So now the best thing it like, uh, I what generally I see is Obsidian, I think is capable of doing pretty much everything. Maybe something's even better. Uh, but the thing is you have to rely on plugins for Obsidian. Uh, journaling, I don't know if you have a default uh, uh, journaling mechanism in, in Obsidian. You might, you might have a plugin that will do that for you, but yeah, this yeah, is built into the system. Yeah, okay, yes, I and and I, I have used ecosystem which rely on plugins a lot, and I know it it is a kind of a pain because plugin author might just you know ditch it someday, uh, those kinds of issues. But I, I really like it when the system itself is uh, is uh, you know uh, has has these very fundamental but uh, very fundamental requirements in the in the system. And uh, I'm not sure if the task management is as easy uh, on Obsidian. Yes, it's similar. I mean, although I I used it before, but I sort of got bored with it and I use a separate system now. Uh, But it's similar. Maybe it's slightly easier here in Logseq, but I would Mm. say maybe like 5-10% difference. But it's very similar in terms of the experience. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. This this was a big win for me. I, it's funny because I never was used to journaling, but I got into Logsic and I'm j- liking this so much that I don't even have to think a little bit, where do I put my stuff? Everything will go into my journal. That's it. And uh, yeah, so it comes by default with the system and uh, query, query functionality, I guess uh, this supports I think entirely it's a programming language. You can do all sorts of ors and whatever you can think of. I think it's uh, Turing complete. So you can write pretty much any query. And as I showed you earlier, right, you can get a table of things. So you yeah. can pretty much get yeah, that. This I don't think is like mm. possible, or at least I haven't seen it in Obsidian. So yeah, maybe. But I'm something. sure there are plugins that do this. But again, yeah, but please, but plugins feel like a crutch to me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So, but but now I find this so much more productive and simple that uh, I am okay with the rough edges of this. I will give. Uh, I will. I will. I'm okay with all of that because of the uh, you know value I get out of Logsy. I know the UI sometimes is like as you saw in the presentation itself, right? UI sometimes was buggy, yeah. but uh, yeah, the actual value I know that this will grow incrementally. I mean, they have got the fundamentals right. 
like all of the UI and all of those edges, like they are not important to the core of the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So how do you sync yeah. your nodes currently between systems? Uh, I have a I have a silly cron job uh, that <laughs> runs see. every night. But mm. uh, I usually don't sync. Like I keep things separately. As I said, corporate laptop, I'm not supposed to sync it anywhere. It just lives on there. Uh, mm. But personally, I have two laptops. I tried the phone application. It was very bad. It was uh, almost unusable. But I've mm. seen like Obsidian does a better job. And Obsidian isn't open source yet. No, it's it, it fully is. open source. No, so did they release it? Yeah, I mean, the reason I picked Obsidian or any tool, basically, I, the first thing I check is if it's open source. So Obsidian oh, is okay. also. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, so I'm currently syncing with sync thing. Uh, I have it running on all my servers, so it, that syncs it. But okay, yeah, I was okay. trying to see if there's a better approach, but yeah, I guess everyone has their own uh, little ways of doing that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, but yeah, yeah, good, good presentation. Thank you. It was quite useful. Yeah. To me. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Do you have any closing notes? Okay, uh, there are a few things. Yes, just some comments I want to make before uh, logging off. So, yeah, few sure. things uh, Nikhil did not show. You can uh, put in uh, URLs and it will uh, show the video, embed the video or the image. So, those kind of oh, things yeah. are possible. So, you can go to maybe some. Yeah, just, just quickly, I'm going to demonstrate how keyboard is activated. Right. So I can copy this and copy, you know, paste it here in the journal again. You can see. And then uh make it embed so thumbnail. You can play it right here. Not a problem. Inside this, let's say you want to take some notes, you can do that. Then that context will also be preserved. Inside this video, you thought of a task, you can put it inside here. And I think there is a YouTube timestamp as well. Yeah, you can do embed. Uh, I don't know, one like this. Yeah, you can see like this one, like this video, right? Since I've nested it, it will do this 130, uh, one hour, 12 minutes, zero seven. Now, if I click this, you can see like it just goes there. At this point, you can take notes again. At this specific thing, you thought of a thing, then uh, yeah, then you go on with whatever you want to dump. Yeah, thanks again, Arvind. Is a <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Another yes. comment is of course uh, one blogger. He has been of course like. Uh, some some of you who have been trying different tools, he has also tried. So he didn't favor Logseq that much. Uh, one reason is he's like an author and he mm -hmm. writes long form content. So okay. this bullet uh, form of short content doesn't work for him. Mm -hmm. So that is one particular use case where he didn't fit his uh, requirement. Then another reason is that uh, I think uh, Logseq has been around for a while. Still, they are on beta. Yeah, and the problem with uh, having a product too long in beta is that it gives developers an excuse to simply change things drastically. Mm. Right, it kind of sets expectations among users that we can break things at any point because we are in beta. So yeah. that puts some users off because they want a little bit of stability because they are going to invest time learning the syntax, learning how things, ideas can be connected. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, having a product too long in beta is also not a good idea. So these are a couple of reasons which he gave for, uh, you know, not selecting mm -hmm. Logseq. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he selected in the end, maybe Obsidian or uh, Notion that I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. but this is something I wanted to share. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair point. But uh, I mean, I guess I could go on a little bit on and have some counters as to why Logseq, even if it's in beta, even if it goes into production, I mean, version uh, stable releases, I know that they won't break the things, even though it's open source, I know because I understand the philosophies uh, uh, of the language that was used to build here, and that language is highly uh, uh, 
uh, st uh, highly stable. They don't have uh, like uh, half yearly releases or anything like that. It's just that they, yeah, I mean, they have their reasons. Fine, that, that's a fair, fair decision. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Arvind. Uh, 